And it's uh, a pleasure to have Derek Shelton, the Rays hitting coach. You know, I, I'm not sure if it's James Brown or Todd Callis, who is the hardest working man in show business. And Derek Shelton has to have the the most difficult job in any business as hitting coach. And I don't care what team you're with, where you are, uh, Derek. It's uh, it's a tough job. You have to admit. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, there's a lot of things going on on a daily basis. You got 13 different guys, but. You know, anytime I get thrown into a conversation with TK, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> yeah, who is it? I mean, come on. Well, you're grading on the curve there. Right. <laughs> well, hey, let, let, let's talk about this. It's some good things here. Uh, As, go ahead. Base hit here for Ben Intendi to lead it off, so the leadoff man on. Well, since the All Star break, uh, the Tampa Bay Rays have the best run differential in the American League. Now obviously the pitching has been very very good but to have that run differential you've got to be able to score runs and you go over what this team has done in the last couple of weeks scoring runs. What are you seeing as a whole from this group. Well I think we're you know we're back to back to full strength. We got guys back that, that need to be in our lineup and I think Dickerson's been better which helps us a ton and uh, I don't think you can overlook when we brought uh, Forsyth back and what Longo and Brad Miller have done have just been outstanding. You know, you talk about uh, Corey Dickerson. Here's a guy with uh, great power. Do you, and, and sometimes when guys go from one league to another, there's an adjustment. You know, he's had to really go from a ballpark that's good for hitters to one that at times can be a challenge for hitters. Give us a little insight into that process. Yeah, I, I think that plays a, a big part of it, Dwayne. I think when you when you switch leagues and you don't know the guys that. Uh, that you know and I think for a perfect example with Corey is anytime we've gone back in the West in the National League West and he's been comfortable he's been really really good. So I think that adjustment and the adjustment of you know being a more or less a full time DH I think that plays into it. You have to learn how to do that and you don't see a lot of guys earlier in their career that do that. It's usually guys that are later in their career that that go into that role. So I think that's been an adjustment for him also. Pedroia is ahead three and oh here. You know, Derek, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Kevin Kiermeyer. Obviously, spending most of the season down in the eight hole, now moving up uh, to the two hole. It looks as if he, you know, talk a little bit about what he's been working on, his skill set fitting into that two hole. And it also looks to us that, that you know, being a little bit more patient, being a little bit more willing to try at least to take a walk, to get on base, and now being up at the top of that order, trying to be a table setter for you know Longoria Miller in the middle. Right, and I think the skill set's probably the right the right word for that BA is the fact that you know he has utilized the bunt more. He's had uh, Forsyth on in front of him, so you know we've encouraged him to put the ball down because the worst thing that happens is he gets a sack, and I think we've seen him a couple times even when he sacks get base hits out of it because he runs so well. And then the second part of that is the fact that you know when he was down at the bottom I think he got a little bit too aggressive got out of the zone a little bit. He's done a nice job of coming back into the hitting zone. You know he's battling something in terms of having a top hand issue which for a right handed thrower left handed hitter is a little bit of a challenge and uh, getting him to try to stay on top of the ball a little bit and having that injury is a little bit of a challenge but those are the things that that he has been you know we have talked to him about and I think we're starting to see the fruits of it a little bit and he's using his skill set better. With uh, Brad Miller Brad Miller moves over to first base did, did you foresee Brad Miller being a potential 30 home run guy. No I don't think we saw them being a potential 30 home run guy. I think one of the things that we talked about you know from the onset is that he hits the ball really hard and I don't think anybody could say he's going to have 24 25 whatever he has because some of the balls he hit have just been line drives that have just backspun out of the ballpark and it's not like they've been out of the ballpark by just a couple feet they've gotten out of the ballpark and even more so I think the thing that's probably been the most encouraging and surprising is he's driven balls out to center field and balls out to left field and as you alluded to earlier I mean hitting the ball out of this ballpark here is not easier and for a left handed hitter to go left center or go straight away center it's very important. So you know, it's been really good. You know, we've talked uh, early about him about how hard he hits the ball, the ball off his bat. You can hear it as well as see it. Uh, I don't know offhand who hits the ball any harder consistently than he does. Yeah, I don't think so. I think you know when you're talking about our lineup, probably Longo would be the you know the one guy, especially with the year Longo's having. But you know, Brad has that different sound. He's hit a couple balls here that have that have gotten out into left center that that off the bat you think are line drives in the gap and they end up landing you know five six rows back, and you don't see that very often. Ben at second moved up on that uh, ground ball by. 
Pedroia a strike the count here on Bogarts in a two nothing game. That's a foul ball. I want to ask you uh, for a moment. I know it's it's going to be incomplete because we haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, Matt Duffy coming over. He had the Achilles strain. Uh, give us your impression of what you've seen so far. Well, number one, you know, we asked him to switch positions, and I think he's done a very good job of that. You know, moving back to his natural position, and then secondly. I think the thing we really like about him offensively is how flat his swing is. You know, he's a he's a different skill set for for our lineup. He's a bunch of contact. He uses the other side of the field, and uh, he hits line drives. And you know, we've had some guys that get the ball elevated, get the ball to the ballpark, and you know, we have some swing and miss. So to add a dimension into our lineup with what he does and how he does it, it it's really a nice addition for us. Yeah, talking about that, would would you like to see this lineup a little more varied than it's been this year? Well, I think we, you know, we would always want it to be a little bit more varied, but I think we always know that, you know, the guys we're going to get and how we're going to have to utilize them is is the key to that. And so it's just a matter of making sure that when we get into those different situations, you know, we try to get more contact, you know, especially the, the runner scoring position or the runner at third less than two outs, because when you have, you know, high contact or high fly ball home run and then low contact, we, we need to make sure we do just do a better job in those situations. Bogarts takes this one down and away. It's one and two. You know, how much emphasis is put on a situational hitting to where these guys, you know, aware of, of game situations, what's needed to be done, you know, each you know time they go to the play. Is that something that is talked about, you know, while you're on the bench, or is that just a feel that a guy has for the game situation, who's on the mound, and the job that they need to accomplish? Well, I, th I think, it, you know, the guys that are elite at it, it is a feel. They just have the ability to, to do it. But... Uh, the first point of that we do talk about it a lot. You know, it's something we talk about from day one of spring training on through where it gets a little bit difficult is that you can never replicate game speed in terms of runner and scoring position and you can never replicate the, the heartbeat or what's going on with the guy in the box. So, you know, some guys innately have the ability to do it. And then with guys that with guys that don't, we have to continue to stress, you know, exactly what you're saying, B.A., is the the pitch location, you know, what the sequence is going to be, the pitches you're going to swing at, because what it comes down to is probably not the pitches you swing at, it's probably the pitches are that you don't swing at. Because if you put yourself in good counts and you don't swing at pitchers' pitches in those situations, you know, they're going to have to come on the plate and then you have a better chance of, uh, of doing the job. You know, you mentioned at the outset you're going to have 12, 13, maybe 14, but let's say 13 guys. You know, it, people have said, and, and I think you can make a strong case that hitting may be the most difficult thing in sport to do. There's a psychological side to that, just to just to stay on an even keel. How do you address that with your hitters, and how do you address that with yourself as the hitting coach here? <laughs> Addressing it with myself, I think Nellie and I are the fact that we have each other as a sounding board, and I think our wives probably hate us at times because <laughs> we'll go home <laughs> and kill each other over it. But uh, I, I think the biggest part of it is just making sure you stay uh, you stay positive because of the fact that it is a grind. There are 13 guys. Everybody's got a different personality. And everybody has a different swing. So on that part of it, it's just making sure we stay positive on a daily basis, you know, regardless of what happened the day before. All right, a little issue here. Walk on the uh, 3 2 slider to uh, Bogart. So uh, Jim Hickey goes to the mound and he'll do a little talking of his own from the pitching side here. Uh, Derek, we appreciate what you do and we appreciate the time. And uh, it's, it's just like having another guy in the booth. Nice going here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You bet.